here. Uh, in the past two weeks since we did the last show, uh, there's been a ton of, uh, you know, industry chatter, industry conferences, uh, companies in the data space being bought like crooks being picked up by Salesforce.com. And Salesforce.com is just seems to be on a, a giant buying spree right now. Uh, and the things that they're tending to target are, are you know, things in the data space. Uh, I had an opportunity uh, one of the evenings uh, about a week and a half ago uh, to go check out uh, one of those meetups in New York City. The meetup in this case was called Data Driven New York, and it featured a bunch of the kind of lead data scientists uh, at some of the top technical companies such as Uber, such as Instacart, and they really opened up the hood on what's going on there in the engines that are the technology infrastructure for uh, Uber, for Instacart. I was so impressed uh, by the data that those guys are using to really optimize their businesses. You know, in past shows, we've talked about machine learning uh, and tried to separate the signal from the noise with regard to that. Identify where the real value is versus the hype. Uh, we also had a chance to talk with uh, Bill Harvey about driver tags and about, uh, you know, data in the media industry and how that's really turned uh, the whole uh, broadcast sphere upside down over the past 20 years. Uh, you know, now that everything is addressable, not everything, but we're getting to a point, uh, we're past the tipping point uh, where everything is is leaning towards being addressable. And there's a big, uh, you know, uh, urgency in the industry to be able to start to merge uh, different advertising models. In traditional marketing, there's the MMM mar uh, model, which is the uh, media mix marketing model. And, uh, you know, that was the way that uh, over-the-air broadcasting was kind of uh, optimized. And, you know, along comes a little thing called digital, and uh, it brings with it, you know, the ability to target directly and know exactly who's checking out your stuff. And so attribution modeling comes into play. And now you've got a sphere uh, there in marketing where uh, there's confusion over how to best uh, optimize your MMM models versus your attribution models so that you can uh, divvy up your marketing dollars, your advertising dollars across whether it's TV or radio or digital or out of home like billboards uh, and the like. So what's happening here and, uh, you know, the, the technology companies that are uh, native digital from the start like Uber, like Instacart, they've got this uh, figured out. Uh, and, you know, how do you leverage data in the right way to draw insights to optimize your business and really, you know, put something as amazing together as, uh, you know, the Instacart uh, ability to turn around uh, shopping orders in, uh, you know, just a matter of an hour or two hours there uh, and uh, for, for any grocery store in your area that you like. So data, though, is uh, something that we talk about. You hear all about it. You hear about the buzz around big data and little data and right data and wrong data. But uh, one of the things that uh, has really caught my eye here is not about the data itself. Uh, well, actually, it is about the data itself. It's not about uh, how the data is used for so much as it is the value of the data itself. And in episode number 23 of Pop Song Tech, we were talking about this in the context of, uh, it, let's say, television advertising. In the television advertising space, uh, traditionally, uh, you have companies like Nielsen. And Nielsen are there to measure uh, the viewership, right? And so thinking about uh, what is the value of being able to measure something in comparison to that something itself. So in the case of television or radio, they're airing spots, right? They're airing spots to advertise uh, various products, and that's how they make their money. So let's say they charge their advertisers. Let's say you're a radio station and you charge your advertisers $100 for a 30-second spot. What is the value of knowing people actually heard that? Or in the digital space, uh, putting an impression out there on a banner ad uh, and spending $100 on that banner ad, uh, what is the value of knowing how many people actually viewed it, right? Or the value of uh, knowing how many people viewed a program or listened to a program. Well, Bill Harvey in uh, episode number 23 kind of put a rule of thumb out there of 2%. Think of it as an insurance policy. Uh, so if you're able to charge $100 for a 30-second spot, let's say, the value of being able to measure that impact is 2% of that, 
or $2. And so thinking about data in that way, kind of using a 2% uh, uh, benchmark there or a benchmark or a rule of thumb is something that uh, there hasn't been a lot of chatter around. And in fact, I was talking with some uh, executives uh, in the media space at a variety of companies uh, over the past week, and uh, we were having a conversation about exactly this. And uh, the funny thing was that I was saying and arguing that there needs to be a language of data. There needs to be better uh, valuation of the data itself and the ability to measure that data itself, because that's a binary factor that is the foundation of all other conversations. And people were disagreeing with me. They were saying, we already have a language for this. It's uh, it's based on focusing first on the business outcomes and the, the return on the investments and uh, the actual sales and, and all of those things. And I agree that that is the ultimate end game. But to get to the end game, you have to have the building blocks. And those building blocks include the data itself uh, in terms of the ability to measure that data. And so I was making this point, and while people originally disagreed with me, by the end of the conversation, they had turned around. And they were saying, yes, Otis, you're right. We need to have the ability to look at data itself and the ability to measure the impact or measure behavior of consumers or or machines or whatever it happens to be there needs to be the ability to draw a dollar value for that itself and you know let's toss out there the two percent rule of thumb that seems to be a, a a reasonable place to start and from that you can start to build models about these things and you know the more that i talked about this the more that uh, executives at this event started getting excited about it and and you know by the end of the event one of the key themes that came out of it was the idea that data is currency or data is cash in my perspective i've often said that data is the new oil of business if businesses are are looked at not in the traditional way but as iterative self-learning machines, what's going on within those machines? Well, you know, you got to have something to run those machines. And that's something, in my opinion, is oil, right? It's data. Data is the oil of the machine. The machine can be automated as much as possible with software at its heart. Uh, and uh, still, there's a need for oil for any machine. And data is that. So if you think about oil, you know, Oil itself has tremendous uh, currency associated with it. It is, uh, you know, if you think about the Beverly Hillbillies, I think about them striking oil and moving the Beverly Hills right there. And, uh, and uh, what a great television show that was. But uh, the oil here is the currency, and we trade on oil in uh, the markets. And why aren't we trading on data yet? That's the premise. That's the hypothesis that I've posed to the industry, to several executives across the industry. And I've said, you know, we need to look at this as a new currency. We need to have a rate card for data. Uh, we need to think about data as cash. And, you know, companies need to start thinking about putting together P&L statements or profit and loss statements for data in ways that they don't today. And this is so critical. Uh, specifically in the media industry. Uh, this is so critical because all of these companies through uh, addressable TV sets or addressable this or addressable that, all of these companies are now starting to be able to house first-party data in many cases for the first time in their corporate existence. And, you know, as anybody that's new to the game, uh, people need some advice in this space about what to do with that first party data. Because, you know, in some cases, as uh, Bill Harvey in episode 23 was pointing out, you've got companies like Nielsen that are in the business of measuring, uh, you know, consumer interactions with content. And in the case of uh, the first party data space, uh, Nielsen went to the MVPDs or the cable operators and said, hey, you know, just give us all that set top box data and we'll help you crunch the numbers and calculate it. You need us anyway, because Nielsen's a currency in the advertising space. And, you know, why don't you just give us the data? You know, that's gold. They're asking for the MVPDs to just turn over their data and turn over their gold and just give away their oil. And the MVPDs wisely said, I don't think so, Nielsen. And uh, therefore, uh, you know, they came up with some dollar amounts for those things. I don't know what those dollar amounts were, but they certainly uh, came to some agreement using some benchmarks for that. Um, but, uh, you know, in many cases uh, today, uh, there's a, such a gap in the ability to do audience measurement 
and to do measurement of advertising impacts and all of that kind of stuff. And yes, the Holy Grail is determining ROI. And there are plenty of companies that are out there piecing those things together. But I've observed and I'm arguing in the industry that there is a need to establish a binary rate for the, fun, the uh, foundational elements of data. And people are starting to agree with me and uh, thinking about data as oil, data as cash. You know, we talk about in the industry, in the technology space, the uh, buzzwords of machine learning and artificial intelligence and, you know, deep learning and all of those things are going to bring to, to uh, uh, fruition here over the next couple of years. Some amazing capabilities, uh, you know, taking it to the nth degree. We're talking about things like cognitive advisors, where computers based on looking at your behavior are able to know more about you than you may consciously be able to recognize about yourself. If, you know, as some industry experts say, 95% of human decision-making is based on the subconscious. Well, the subconscious is just that, sub or below your ability to know know yourself. Uh, so, but, but there's still a decision that's made. And through looking at patterns in behavior and looking at uh, data associated with behavior, uh, whether those are, uh, let's say, emails uh, as data points or phone records as data points, you can start to infer patterns about people and start to identify and observe realities about people that they may not even be able to articulate themselves. This is a gold mine for marketers. And uh, so getting at that fundamental data, that's the key here. And establishing some sort of evaluation system for that. And not only that, extend that even further to the need for some sort of a trading mechanism for this to occur. We are just at the beginning of this journey. We need to establish these, you know, valuations associated with data and then create brokerage exchanges by which this data can trade hands in ways that are far more uh, like the financial industry in terms of how they trade stocks, right? I think there's a huge opportunity in the industry to come together and, you know, form co coalitions or uh, what, co co-ops or whatever you want to do. Uh, but, you know, to date, everything has been so piecemeal from one company to another company. Uh, we are so at the beginning of this story of data, and uh, there are so many needs and uh, foundational elements that need to come together. But just like a computer with its bit system of zeros and ones, yes, the computer ultimately meets some sort of an objective of establishing an outcome for your life, whether that's communication or business or whatever it is. But to say, you know, we want a computer uh, so that we can do these things, but not talk about uh, computers being built on zeros and ones is silly. But, you know, in the computer space, they've established, hey, you know what? We need zeros and ones. In the data space, in terms of uh, commerce of data, nobody's done that yet. But everybody is so concerned about, you know, the outcome, right? So there's some just a foundational element that I think the industry needs to come together on. So, you know, I think that's something that uh, I hope that if you're listening to this program and you have uh, the ability to uh, influence others into starting to think about data as currency and first-party data as a core asset of a company – something that could potentially be put and valued on a profit and loss statement for the company from an accounting and a financial perspective, I think we're onto something here because once you establish a dollar amount, that actually creates an incentive for companies to start trading that data and getting it out there. That will help solve the total audience measurement problem in particular in the media space. This is something that people say they're doing, but they're not doing. They're, let's, do, let's be frank here. They're not, nobody's ever going to get the total audience measurement with the current uh, structure in place. You add a dollar amount to that data, though, I think you start to get OTT data out there. I think you give people an incentive to sell that data at a certain cost and that that cost can be handled and brokered through exchange uh, tra trading facilities. Uh, in, again, in, the sa in a similar way to uh, NASDAQ or, or uh, you know, at a, at a different scale. But, uh, you know, in the same way that the financial industry is kind of, kind of uh, evolved in that space. And, you know, this is a common trend. Oftentimes, especially in media, media tends to be a follower, uh, not necessarily a fast follower, but certainly a follower of the financial industry in terms of its uh, uh, motivations there. Uh, because, you know, in the, in the trading space, people are uh, trying to 
cut up fractions of pennies and at scale that makes them millions of dollars in the media space that hasn't really been the need until now.